Hi, my name is Paul Sargent, and welcome again to AP European History. We're going through Chapter 24 of the Spielvogel text today, um, and we're going into Part uh, 2, Cultural Developments that are going on in Europe at the time, all right? So look, we talked about science and ideas and psychology and all of that last time, and, and, and those really are an attack on Christianity, because belief and science tend to not agree with one another, you know, and as you have more science, more modernity, you have more people believing in science, um, you have a, a, an attack on the church. And this was made a, a lot more strong by the state control of the church courts, uh, the religious orders, and, and, and appointments of church officials so that the, 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 the governments are actually sort of putting these people in, in place. And and this sets up sort of an anti-clerical feeling along that. And of course, the church, who's going out and trying to sort of maintain their view of things, tries to suppress science, tries to say that science is wrong on things, and kind of fails. Uh, and so they also um, then have to deal with, with higher criticism. And with a free press and all that, people are writing new things. Ernst Renan uh, writes the life of Jesus, where he looks around and he says, hey, you know, Jesus isn't necessarily the son of God, but he has a great, you know, a lot of great things to teach us, but he's just a man with some great ideas. Um, these are all attacks on traditional Christianity. So how do they respond? Well, initially, they completely reject the whole, the whole modernity thing, you know, um, there's a tendency to say we've been doing this for 2,000 years at this point. We know what we're doing. Um, even Protestant religions uh, uh, rejected a lot of this. Um, and, and Pope Pius in 1864 uh, puts out this syllabus of errors, which kind of says, you know, the Catholic Church doesn't really have to go along with all of this stuff, that, that you know, uh, that, 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 that they're kind of right. Um, and they end up condemning the whole idea of modernism. But the truth is that nothing's stopping the tide here, okay? So eventually we end up with compromise, and Leo XIII sends out De Rerum Novarum, which is like a, a papal statement, which says, hey, look, you know, we're not against any of these new ideas, but unfettered capitalism has really created some real problems. So he actually goes out and says, we don't want revolutionary Marxist kind of socialism, but we would love to see Catholics creating socialist parties that they can be part of and thus change society for the better because Christianity is a little bit socialist. All right, there's also literature that goes on here at this time. Um, there's a movement in naturalism, which is a little bit like realism, but it's a little more pessimistic, you know. Maybe things aren't quite going as well as we thought. Um, Emil Zola is an example. In Russia, you have Leo Tolstoy and uh, Dostoevsky who are writing novels. Um, and then there's also a movement called Symbolism. Now, I'm moving through this quickly because, honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen uh, this asked about on the AP exam. So, you know, kind of just moving through it. Um, but uh, symbolism, yeah, hey, look, they look around, they say, look, it's impossible to objectively understand what reality is. So symbols are important, and art should be something that is there for the sake of just having art, not for the sake of trying to create something else or expand our knowledge of all of that. So speaking of art, we get to modernism. And really, there's a few major movements. Now, Impressionism is in my opinion, the number one that you should know. Um, it is all about innovation. It's the first real big change since the Renaissance. There's new subjects. Um, some of the big names, Pizarro, Monet, uh, Manet, Renoir, um, uh, Degas, all of these guys are out there. And, and they're using sort of a sort of large choppy brush strokes to, to create an immediate impression of how light and color interact at an immediate moment um, there. Now they're followed by the post-impressionists who say like, you know, okay, that's great. And you're, and you're showing things at an actual time, but you know, hey, we've got this, you know, camera that everybody's using now and they can do that too. 
Um, and so here's this idea of like, okay, so now the post impressionists are less about depicting things in the immediate right now and more about how the artist sees the things and sees the world and all of that. It's almost a subjective reality because subjective means that it's through the eyes of the artist, not just, you know, here's an absolute at this moment. Vincent van Gogh is perhaps the greatest known uh, post-impressionist, um, you know, the, the guy with the ear, you can read about it. It's not a pretty story. Um, and, and, but, you know, as people, as art starts to move on and on, as artists start to rebel against other artists and all of that, um, you know, they rebel against photography and they create some different art movements. Pablo Picasso is like the poster child for a movement called Cubism, which tries to sort of depict reality through a series of um, geometric shapes. And, and I'll show you some slides of this uh, here in a minute. And then, of course, we enter the abstract. Kandinsky is sort of the pioneer of the abstract. And the idea here is that there's absolutely no need to uh, depict anything that is realistic. You know, it's all about color and shape and interpretation and, you know, being abstract. And this is honestly where I kind of lose art a little bit because I, I don't quite get abstract, um, although I'm trying. Um, so here's some pictures for you to look at. This is Claude Monet's impression of a sunrise. You can see sort of the broad brush strokes that he uses here um, and how the sun is right there and it's reflecting. It's this absolute moment of here's what it would look like at this instant um, as the sun comes up over the water. Um, Morisot's young girl by the window. You know, if this young girl is sitting in other places, perhaps she doesn't have this same sort of uh, lighting on her or the same momentary uh, change. She's kind of looking at us saying like, yeah, you know, you know here we are um, and checking it out. Now, when you get to Cezanne, we're talking post-impressionist here. Now, 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 if you look at this, now this is much less sort of realistic, much less depictive of an actual thing. And, and, and this is Mont Saint-Victoire. So yeah, we can see a mountain here in the background. What is he trying to show in the foreground? Well, you know, there's obviously uh, homes and uh, trees and things like that, but trees are no more than brush strokes that are up and down, um, creating this sort of idea of how he might interpret this. Total post-impressionist, this, this is the guy, Vincent Van Gogh, Starry Night. I mean, probably his most influential and well-known painting, um, but very much his interpretation of what's going on. In no way would anyone look up in the sky and see this sort of thing going on. Um, so, so this is post-impressionist. Um, Pablo Picasso, um, this is not Les Demoiselles, Les Demoiselles. <laughs> this is a mask um, uh, that I believe Picasso made. Um, it's showing that also, you know, when you get into this period, people are looking sort of back to sort of traditional, and they almost go kind of uh, a little bit African at sometimes um, influences of, of art. Here's the Les Demoiselles. Um, and you can see this is cubist, right? So there's absolutely no perspective here. I mean, look at this woman's face. It's completely turned around. It has no, you know, basis in reality. You know, these women's uh, bodies are created to be very sort of geometrical. Um, and yet you get the idea of what he's trying to paint. That's what the cubists were trying to do. And then we come to the abstract. And this is square with white border. Um, and, and you can see here that, there, that now the depiction of reality has kind of gone away. Um, and now it's all about trying to create something, almost a conversation between the viewer and the artist. So that's our overview of culture. Um, music is, is certainly something uh, that's there. Um, and you can read about that. Although, to be honest with you, I've never seen uh, modern music on the AP exam. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. I'm Paul Sargent.